everyone, welcome. I'm Ankit Roteja and you are watching Tech It Out. This week, let's understand if it's right or wrong to convert a classic car into an electric car. We explain how technology is set to transform the Paris 2024 Olympics. And we bring you a wrap of all the latest tech breakthroughs. Let's get started. There is a growing trend to convert vintage cars into electric vehicles, but it seems many classic car owners are not in favor of this revolutionary concept. We get you more details in this report. There's an irreplaceable joy in driving a vintage car, but there are many problems with classic cars. It's difficult to find their parts. Drivers struggle to keep up with speed limits on highways. Fuel efficiency is a common concern. They lack the safety features and require a lot of effort and maintenance to stay on the road. But car enthusiasts have found a solution to these problems. They are converting classic cars into electric vehicles. Look at this. At first sight, this 1960s Gordon Keeble looks like a typical classic sports car of its era. But under the bonnet, it's hiding a shocking secret a fully electric engine. Only 99 Gordon Keebles were built, so it's already a rare sight. And this unique model is the only electric version in existence. I'm not a great lover of electric cars, to be perfectly honest, but this one had a new lease of life because it had an electric motor put into it. Um, I don't think it really would have... It, would, it wouldn't have been out and being used if it hadn't have had that happen. So. Most classic cars can be converted to electric, like this Porsche 911, one of the most iconic German sports cars ever made. Or this Jaguar E-Type, its 4.2-litre petrol engine has been replaced with an electric motor. Many firms around the world are converting classic cars into electric marvels. US-based E-Muscle Cars is one such startup that is electrifying classic cars. We originally bought several old cars, uh, Mustangs, Camaros, Corvettes, Broncos, uh, classic American vehicles, and then we 3D scanned them all. And then we took the highest performance electric motors on the market today, and we mated them using SolidWorks and, uh, and Dassault products virtually. And then with those virtual designs of motor mounts, drivetrains, suspension components, we were able to build and modernize these old cars. One of the main reasons people are converting their classics to electric is for reliability. With fewer moving parts, an electric motor is much more straightforward than a traditional combustion engine. For people driving in cities, there are also advantages of avoiding emission charges. Most importantly, they are greener and future-proof. While converting classic cars to electric is becoming increasingly common, not everybody in the community welcomes these plug-in pretenders. Mike Binden, the owner of Triumph TR5, is one such person. He proudly pops the bonnet of his car to show its 2.5-litre petrol engine. Mike Binden can never imagine converting his pride and joy to electric. Changing one of these cars to electric would some ways be a sin. I think we have to acknowledge that these cars have very limited use so the emissions which they produce over a, a given amount of time I think is really small. Also electric cars are silent and for many petrol heads the sound of the exhaust note is an essential part of the driving experience and pleasure. Therefore most older classic car enthusiasts don't approve of the electrification. The large majority of classic cars still retain their original combustion engines. Electric conversions of classics remains a niche area in the community. However, more and more classics are being electrified. And as each year passes, the movement is charging up its power. The Paris Olympics are fast approaching. France is heavily relying on technological solutions to offer visitors a pleasant and safe experience. 
In this story, we tell you about the cutting edge technologies that are set to be deployed during the Olympic Games. Paris is gearing up to host the 2024 Olympics. The Summer Olympics will be held in the French capital between July 26 and August 11. With preparations in full swing, technology is at the forefront of it all. Digital innovations are poised to shape the spectator experience. Let's take a look at how tech is being used at the Paris Summer Olympics 2024. Around 15 million visitors are expected to visit France during the 2024 Olympics. Maintaining the safety of thousands of athletes and millions of audience is not going to be an easy task. This is where tech comes into picture. France is experimenting with AI-enabled video surveillance. Smart cameras have been deployed across Paris and on public transport. The AI-enabled cameras can detect crowd surges, fires, abandoned bags and unusual or risky behavior, ensuring the safety of millions of spectators traveling to Paris for the Games. We currently have 150 sites equipped, which equates to 3,000 to 55 cameras. It's impossible for a human being, a video operator, to watch 3,000 to 55 cameras in real time. So this system, using a thermal camera, gives us instant information on anyone entering a site. It's called an intruder alarm, and it allows us to intervene quickly with the police since we can send images to headquarters, so we can resolve a criminal act very quickly. The AI-enabled surveillance was successfully tested at a concert that took place at the Accor Arena in Paris. The meandering metro, which features more than 300 stations, has names that can be hard to find or pronounce, even for natives. It can easily become a nightmare for anybody without fluent French. So how will millions of visitors without knowledge of French or even English use public transport to shuttle between sports venues? Enter Tradivia. The Paris Metro has launched an instant translation app ahead of the Olympic Games to help hapless foreign visitors navigate the French capital's urban transport system. Powered by AI, the app will guide lost visitors during the Olympics. <laughs> The public transport system of Paris will provide thousands of agents access to the artificial intelligence supported translation app. It can handle 16 languages. The app translates spoken queries in languages such as English, German, Mandarin, Hindi and Arabic into French for the benefit of agents. Their responses then get translated back to the language of the visitor. According to authorities, it is a decisive advantage over general translation help like Google Translate, which sometimes fails to make sense of the metro's idiosyncrasies. This tech solution is likely to change the metro workers' experience, giving them more confidence to approach tourists in the metro. Ça a pas forcément complètement changé mon quotidien. We no longer have this apprehension, this apprehension of approaching visitors, so we obviously know that they can speak, for example, in Korean or in Hindi or in Mandarin. We no longer have this fear of thinking, oh no, we're not going to understand each other. Here, we know straight away, with regard to the languages here, to press straight on Hindi and immediately have clear, more precise information, and we can be sure that when the visitor leaves, he's satisfied. The app has been specifically tailored to the Paris Metro experience. Cybersecurity continues to be a cause of concern for the French government. With the 2024 Olympics just around the corner, the French armed forces are reviewing their cyber capabilities ahead of the major sporting event. The aim is to avoid cyber-related incidents during the 2024 Olympics. During the Olympics and beyond, you'll have people who want the publicity, like criminals 
or who will want to tarnish France's image. That's why a combination of a cyber attack and an attack of influence, which aims to bring discredit, could be significant. Different branches of the French military, including the Air Force and the Navy, are conducting live exercises to test the country's cyber defenses. We talk to our partners, especially when it comes to cyber defense and sharing information about threats. As soon as we have detected malware, specific means of action, we share this between ourselves so that we all can guard ourselves against it. By protecting each other, we quash its proliferation. The test will help evaluate the military's readiness in the event of a cyber attack. With the biggest names in sport preparing to play at the Olympics, let's see which country manages to claim the first spot and clinch the highest number of medals at the Paris Olympics 2024. YouTubers are abusing monkeys at a UNESCO site. All that to earn likes, improve views and gain subscribers. Watch this story for more details. Are you guilty of watching animal videos on the internet? Especially monkey videos on YouTube? Well, what if we tell you that the number of YouTube videos on Cambodian monkeys might soon decrease? Now, why do we say that? It's because the Cambodian government is investigating the abuse of monkeys in the country. Officials say that people, especially YouTubers, abuse monkeys to draw online viewers to generate cash. The YouTubers, uh, they produce uh, content uh, relating to the activities of the monkeys and they have fed the monkeys with food in which whereas the monkey should be left alone, whereas the monkey should be living in the, in the wild where they're supposed to be uh, live. These visuals are from Krong Siem Reap, a city in Cambodia. This is where Angkor Wat, the famous Hindu Buddhist temple and Southeast Asia's most popular tourist site, is located. Scenes like these are common here. Every day, hundreds of YouTubers try new ways to draw monkeys closer. The wild monkeys feast on the bananas tossed to them by the YouTubers. They drink water from plastic bottles. Although the idea is to film monkeys in their natural habitat doing human-like activities, the impact is dangerous. It's making the monkeys dependent upon the handouts. Also, the close interaction with humans means they are increasingly becoming aggressive towards tourists. Lately, monkeys from the surrounding jungle have made their way to the ancient sites in search of food from the tourists. Meanwhile, it's not just monkeys, the World Heritage Site is in danger too. How? There are instances where monkeys pulled away pieces of the temples and caused other damage to the ancient ruins. The authority for the protection of the site and management of the region of Angkor, commonly known as Apsara, is doing its bit to curb the abuse of monkeys in the region. They have opened an investigation with Cambodia's Ministry of Agriculture to collect evidence for legal action against the most serious abusers, who are rarely seen in the video themselves. Nick Marks, a wildlife researcher, believes that while the answer is simple, it is perhaps elusive. The issue that seems to me the biggest problem is uh, these are generated to make money. And if people that don't like this kind of thing would stop watching them, that would really help solve the problem. We have shared with you a lot of interesting stories on emerging tech trends, but there is a lot more that's happening in the world of technology across the globe. Here is a quick wrap of all the latest breakthroughs. This is the biggest day for iPads since its introduction. The new iPad is finally here. Tech giant Apple has launched the latest edition of the iPad Pro and iPad Air. The all-new iPad Pro comes in two sizes, an 11-inch model and a 13-inch model. The iPad Pro 13-inch model is just 5.1mm thick, making it the thinnest Apple product to date.
The new iPad Pro is even thinner than the iPod Nano, which makes it the thinnest Apple product ever. The iPad Pro also comes with an OLED display, a first for an iPad. Everything you view on this display will look amazing. And we're calling it the Ultra Retina XDR. And it's coming to both models. While the iPad Pro uses a new chip called the M4, the iPad Air is powered by Apple's M2 chip. The company claims the M4 chip is stronger than the one currently being used in Apple laptops and is capable of handling power-hungry AI tasks. Many believe the M4 chip is a signal that Apple is finally ready to introduce artificial intelligence technology across all Apple devices. That's not all. Introducing Apple Pencil Pro. It takes the pencil experience to a whole new level. The company also announced an update to the popular Apple Pencil called the Apple Pencil Pro. It's the first major overhaul since the company launched the second generation Apple Pencil in 2018. The Apple Pencil Pro is packed with some interesting features such as the squeeze and the barrel roll feature. The launch comes at a time of a decline in iPad sales. The tablet market is witnessing a slowdown as economic uncertainty looms and consumers cut back on non-essential spending. But Apple expects to combat the slump in demand with new products. Look at this. From shooting simulators to kamikaze drones. Cutting-edge defense technology took center stage at a defense exhibition in Malaysia's capital. Held every two years, the Defense Services Asia trade event draws hundreds of exhibitors from around the globe to Kuala Lumpur. Among the bustling crowds, attendees were greeted with demonstrations of cutting-edge defense technology that is aimed at enhancing military capabilities and security measures. At the exhibition, one local company introduced its new shooting simulator. It uses infrared technology to revolutionize the marksmanship training of military personnel. The simulator features five infrared sensors and cameras that can accurately calculate the bullet's trajectory to hit the target. As you can see, you now both there are five uh, IR sensors, cameras, which detects a trigger from our uh, gun, our rifle. And then from there, we will calculate the bullet trajectory based on distance, gravity, wind, and also environmental uh, elements. And we will correctly get the hits, hit zones in the simulator itself. This advanced training tool offers realistic scenarios for handling different types of weapons, including handguns and assault rifles. Another local firm unveiled its kamikaze drones named Todak. This unmanned aerial vehicle is designed to loiter around target areas and deliver precise strikes. Basically, Kamikaze drone uh, role is basically to fly and forget. So it's meant to damage or uh, hit a particular target. Uh, in, in, in our case, our drone can fly up to 40 kilometers. So we can set, set it to, to hit or to reach a, a particular a predetermined target. Although still in the research and development phase, the company plans to bring the Todak to market within the next six to eight months. According to the organizers of DSA, the event generates significant economic spin-offs across various sectors. In Israel, researchers are using artificial intelligence to find the names of Jewish Holocaust victims missing from official memorials. Over 6 million Jews were killed by Nazis during the Second World War. The staff at the Yad Vashem World Holocaust Remembrance Center in Jerusalem are stepping up searches for details of known and unknown victims with their own AI-powered software. In the last two years, we started to use AI uh, uh, models in order to go over uh, testimonies that survivors gave Yad Vashem over the years. and and and, and take out of them the names and the information about the people that were mentioned inside of those uh, testimonies. Very long, for three hours, uh, a, a witness could speak and talk about his family, people that he met. Till now, volunteers have been able to gather data on around 4.9 million individuals from various sources. 
The AI-powered software has been able to identify 90% names that were not in the existing database. That technology works very fast. It takes a few hours to go over uh, hundreds of testimonies. We had volunteers that went over those testimonies. They missed out a lot of information. The testimonies are very long. For three hours, a, a, a witness could speak and talk about his family, people that he met. Researchers have announced the next phase of the search will cover diaries apart from individual testimonies. If doing daily chores like taking out the trash isn't your cup of tea, robots might just be the solution to your problem. Neura Robotics, a Germany-based company, is all set to launch an AI robot called For Anyone. The humanoid AI robot aims to tackle mundane tasks, lending a helping hand to its human whenever required. It should be able to take our garbage out, it should be able to do things which we don't like to do and not the things we love to do. It's like drawing pictures or making, you know, writing nice stories or making movies or whatever. This is something what everyone would love to do, but we simply don't have time for that. And to get some time, we get this one. The For Anyone robot is still under development. The company is yet to announce its release date and pricing. Argentinian scientists have created a photobioreactor called Y-Algae to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. A photobioreactor is a device that grows algae using light to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. Scientists claim the device is 10 to 50 times more efficient than trees. Our reactors in the Y-Algae project are built to be installed in urban environments in places that are completely paved and altered by human activity, where it is not possible to plant a tree, let alone on a large scale. So we always say that we plant a tree where it is possible to plant a tree, but where it is not possible, we have this option. Interestingly, each device can convert around 500 kilograms of carbon dioxide annually. Well, that's all we have for you in this episode of Tech It Out. We will continue to bring you exciting inventions and updates on the latest gadgets. I will be back soon. Until then, keep watching Beyond World is One. And yes, don't forget to follow us on social media. For now, it's me, Ankit Rateja, signing off.